Okay, guys, so I took apart some electronics, and these are not like normally taking apart electronics. I took apart the components. So here we have one of these RF boxes that you see for uh, cable TVs, and um, I just popped the can off. It's actually pretty easy, um, but I wouldn't recommend it if you wanted to keep your thing still working. And so here is one side of it. Um, it's still on the PCB. I just broke the PCB. And there's the other side of it. And so there's a lot of, I noticed is there's, on the other side, there's a lot of coils. And it appears that it's only a PCB, as in like FR4 material on this side. On this side, you can see it doesn't look like there's a PCB. It looks like they've sandwiched a PCB on top of something else. And on this side, there's just coils. I don't know what they do. And there's that one crystal, presumably for a frequency reference. And this is the only active component in the whole design. The rest of them, as you can see, are passive resistors and capacitors. So now I took apart a four pin crystal oscillator. I kind of took it apart with a hammer. So I, I can't actually see the quartz in here, but perhaps the quartz is in that black blob, you know, like the quartz tuning fork almost is what it is. It's a tuning fork made of quartz and it has a little gold on the end, but I, I couldn't tell it in here. So either I smashed it with a hammer or it fell out when I took it apart. But anyway, as you can see, there's just a few components in this sort of PCB like material. I won't call it a PCB. It's more like a ceramic um, but it's, it has a few passive components on it, and that one black blob, and I can't, for the life of me, tell if the quartz is inside that black blob, or that's some sort of control, or if there is no quartz, I don't know. So now I took apart a microprocessor. This is the by far the most interesting one. It's an Intel chip. It was in some of the world's first laptops, maybe. It was, it was used for some computer. So as you can see on the inside, basically, um, the die is sort of cut off in this, but there's basically the um, lead, most of the package is just taken up by the leads itself. Um, and then the leads just, as you can see, are just channeled in to the die, as you can see the little channels on this one, um, on the die on the bottom. But anyway, there's two dies sandwiched together. One of them is metal on the top, and the other one is embedded in the black plastic-like stuff on the bottom, and they're both sandwiched together, basically. I'm not sure if they're making electrical contact or not. I don't know. But they look very nice, and it's difficult to get this on camera. You see it doesn't show up very well, but you can see the slots where each of the leads from the different pins went in. So it's clear that these chips are, as as you, as you we know with SMD stuff, that the large size of the DIP40 um, chips is not because of the large size of the die. It's actually because of the amount of pins necessary sticking to that 0.1 inch. So... Um, that's that's SMD. That's how SMD can get so small is because the die dies are smaller than this even. So you can see the the dies. There appears to be like two memory blocks or two blocks on the top, and you can see that crack in the bottom is because I uh, also smashed this thing with a hammer. But what I did to take it apart is I basically heated it up on a plate on the stove and then smashed it with a hammer till it fell apart. So um, it was pretty violent. But as you can see, there's sort of two blocks on the left. Um, there's sort of two blocks, I presume those are memory blocks, I don't know anything about silicon architecture, so I couldn't tell you. And then um, on, on this, I couldn't, for the life of you, tell it what it was, but um, it's very colorful, and there's a lot of small lines that don't get picked up by the camera very well, so um, the camera really doesn't do it justice, but it's really neat, it's really neat to look at. If you could get a large version, it would make a great picture, but... Um, you know, my camera has bad focusing abilities. So in here, it actually looks green, but the whole thing isn't green. It's just multicolored, lots of yellow, red. There is a bit of green, but um, as you can see in this, there's also the two memory blocks. This time it's been flipped around, and they're on the, the bottom here, but those two memory blocks that you saw on the other one, I guess they match up. Um, I assume they're memory blocks. I really don't know. Um, I couldn't, for the life of you, tell what any of this stuff was, but... Um, I presume those things on the bottom are memory blocks, and they seem to match up with the memory blocks on the other thing. 